good morning everyone and welcome to Rakuten uh, Symphony Session. Uh, it's so nice to be back in Barcelona and uh, at the MWC. As you know, Rakuten was a uh, main sponsor of uh, FC Barcelona for a long, long time. Uh, this year we decided to not to continue, mainly to invest in the Rakuten Symphony. Uh, today, I would like to start introducing who we are, how we started a company, where we stand, and also the reason why we started mobile business, especially based on the new disruptive technology, which now we call it as mobile as a software. I founded Rakuten in 1997 with just a six employees with a startup, the initial capital of 200,000 US dollars. Uh, since then, uh, we have been, uh, you know, keep growing uh, continuously. Uh, and now the global GTV uh, rapidly has reached 34 trillion Japanese yen or approximately 260 or 70 billion US dollars. Uh, for the last 22 years, we have been growing at the speed of CAGR of 39.2%. The annual sort of net uh, sales of Rakuten has reached 1.9 trillion yen, or about uh, 16 uh, billion US dollars, and has, we have been keep growing like this. Now, uh, in Japan, uh, we are the biggest e-commerce company. We are, you know, uh, beating our global competitors. We are the biggest credit card company, uh, credit card company in Japan. Uh, we are biggest online bank, uh, biggest online uh, brokerage firm, biggest online travel agent, uh, and so forth and so forth. Uh, but we have uh, decided to get into the mobile business. When we announced we are going to get into the mobile business, everybody really questioned why are you going into the mobile business while you have uh, such a great, you know, OTT services. Uh, but uh, we believe the mobile business connectivity uh, is going to be a very, very important part of our ecosystem. So uh, we decided to get into the mobile business. And also uh, the Japanese government, I think they had a very strong intention to reopen the, the industry to new entrants and create more competition so that there will be a healthy competition among the, the mobile uh, carriers. Since we launched uh, in uh, 2000, uh, Rakuten Mobile has been uh, growing very, very nicely. As I mentioned, in the credit card industry, we are dominant number one. Just after uh, 15, 16 years, we have about 25% market share for entire credit card transactions. And this is coming from the strength of our ecosystem. But if you compare the growth of Rapid and Mobile versus initial 20 months of Rapid and Car, what we are seeing is amazing. We are growing three times faster than the growth of the initial years of Rapid and Car. And if you can keep doing this, uh, we are going to be at the dominant mobile you know, uh, service company in Japan. And I'll tell you what is making this possible. Because everybody thought this is impossible. But that is a company which is making impossible possible. Not only in Japan, Rakuten are a very, very global company. We have changed our internal communication language from Japanese to English about nine years ago. It is uh, one of the historically, you know, craziest uh, project among the Japanese, uh, you know, business society. Uh, but we did get it out. The intent is Rakuten do not want to just stay as a domestic Japanese company. We want to become a global company. We want to become a global platform company. Uh, therefore, our organization uh, need to be global. Now we have over 6,000 engineers in India, uh, presence and brand awareness in US and uh, Europe uh, are very strong. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we have a big business outside of uh, Japan as well. For example, Rakuten TV, 
which we are going to present later, have a total uh, user of 70 million, uh, especially uh, in Europe, and it's growing 48.3 percent. Wrapped in Biggie, uh, which is a multilingual global streaming platform, we have 66.8 million uh, users. Uh, the second largest ebook company, Kobo, we have 16.8 million users. The one of the biggest messaging app, Wrapped in Viber, has 1.4 billion users. Uh, and uh, Wrapped in Rewards, may, some of you may have seen the, our Super Bowl TV advertisement, but uh, we are uh, getting uh, really, really big. 12.1 billion uh, US dollars of gross merchandise sales uh, last year. So why we decided to get into mobile business? We just could have enjoyed our you know, success uh, with what we have, but we have decided to get into the mobile business because we think this is the largest and most meaningful disruption uh, we can do. If you look at what we do versus what legacy companies are doing, Obviously, you know, legacy telephone companies are really trapped by the conventional wisdom, see the overview of the uh, telecom industry. The platform has not really evolved that much, to be very honest. And I always use the analogy with uh, financial businesses. I used to be a banker. In 20, 25 years ago, everybody was telling me, Banking service cannot be done on the Unix server. It has to be a mainframe. But if you think about Rock them back, we are much more, you know, uh, quality-wise better than most of the legacy banks, and it's scalable faster. But our investment is like less than maybe four or five percent of what big banks are paying in Japan. And internet services has evolved from a big server to Unix server to now uh, to the cloud. But this has never happened in telecom industry because of the structure of the equipment companies as well as service companies. And then their concept has been always hardware centric. And we step back and then thought, oh, wait a minute, can we do it differently? Can we become more like internet service provider for telecom? Can we do it or not? I was amateur enough, I believe probably we should, get, we should try. And therefore, uh, Rapid and Mobile decided to do everything on the software, not really procuring uh, very expensive hardware. So this is what we do. Obviously, our base station uh, doesn't have the big boxes, uh, like, you know, exit legacy uh, platform uh, base stations, our data center are virtualized, uh, and also our central data center is fully virtualized. It is really remarkable. We achieved 40% capex reduction and 30% OPEX reduction, conservatively speaking. And this is very, very similar to what we have done for the credit card business. We really made our system light, agile, and scalable. We saved all these costs and give it back to the consumer, our credit card holders, and they can get more economic benefit. So our intent is we're going to make economically most efficient uh, network in the world and keep our CapEx and OPEX, including radio uh, uh, side acquisition costs as low as possible and give it back to the consumer, then we will get a market share. That's what we want to do. And then, but one thing we realize, one thing which is different from internet bank or internet shopping or internet travel agency or whatever internet services is you really need to build radio stations. Two things. Our radio station is much more simpler, simpler than incumbents. 
So our process of building is much faster, much smaller, uh, and much easier. This enables us to build over 70,000 radio stations in two and a half years. And now uh, we have achieved 98.5% population coverage in Japan. And by the end of this year, we will probably uh, achieve 992 or 3% population coverage. So uh, we have made this historical the project. The reason why we could have done it, of course, we were entrepreneurial. Uh, we have been working very hard to get it done, but at the same time, our system was much simpler and automatic. Automation played a big role uh, to achieve this. And as a result, this is an astonishing number. The Japanese three incumbents has spent somewhere between six to 8.2 trillion yen, or maybe uh, 50 billion to uh, 6.65 billion US dollars to build the current 4G and 5G network. Up to now, nothing has spent approximately uh, 6 billion US dollars, but we need to spend another 2.5 to 3. But the total capex we built, the nationwide network, is 80% less than our competitors in Japan. And then the quality. It is amazing when we started this virtualization and, and ORM, everybody was, to be very honest, you know, cynical. And they're, you know, uh, laughing at us, my friends in the big uh, IT com but companies and telecom companies uh, weren't saying me, good luck, Mickey. It is going to be very difficult. But fast forward, after four years, now, it is obvious that performance of our virtualized network and ORAN is outperforming most of telecom companies in the world. It is really remarkable. Of course, game experience, upload speed, uh, and all the stats. Unfortunately, uh, given uh, the bandwidth we have, the download, download speed uh, you know, we have a margin to improve, but it's just because of the, uh, the bandwidth we have. And then, uh, if you think about the nature of our subscribers versus subscribers of our telecom companies, we are targeting really internet, uh, you know, uh, savvy uh, people who spend more data than our competition. The, the amount of data Average amount of data our subscribers use is more than two times bigger than the average data consumption of the legacy mobile subs uh, service companies. And it is growing very rapidly. So now 18.4 gigabyte, it is going to get to 20, 30, 40. We are seeing many users using 200 gigs. 300 gigs, and that and that is coming. What is happening in Japan? What have been happening in Japan is all these users wanted to be, you know, don't want to spend too much money, so you know they are trying to restrict the their data usage outside and come back where, where they're looking for Wi-Fi, and it was very very restrictive. Or you can pay a very expensive subscription fee two three incumbents, or you can go to the MVNO, which is a not really good experience. They are very slow. But what we want to achieve is we want to democratize wireless network. You don't need to care about how much you use. Uh, you don't need to care about how much you pay. And you can really enjoy the high speed, high quality mobile access anytime, anywhere. So this is what we have done uh, for uh, Japan. The, uh, we decided to call it Unlimit. Now Unlimit version seven is uh, the, uh, the data free and uh, voice free 
the maps you pay is about $25. Compared with three incomers, if you see the price, more well, MNO A, 8,300 BD Japanese yen. MNO B, 8,300 BD yen. MNO C, 8,350 Japanese yen. This is a fact of the, the mobile industry in Japan. It's oligopolized. Exactly the same service and ex almost exactly the same, you know, uh, price. And we, are, we want to disrupt this. The reason why we want to disrupt this is three things. We think this is a disrupt. Our cost structure is unbelievably low because of thanks to the technology we have developed. Therefore, even with as much as there were in a monthly subscription fee, we still can make a profit. This is probably what you guys are here. We want to hear about it. And so stand down as a business. We have seen massive synergy between our mobile subscription and our ecosystem. Unbelievable. They buy more. They join Raptan car. They use Raptan back. And the last piece is, you know, today's subject, uh, Raptan Symphony. The analogy is Amazon e-commerce service and the AWS. So we have a little bit more because Raptan is ODD service company, Raptan Mobile, and Raptan Symphony. The reason there is only one successful, sizable mobile service company which is based on open radio access network is Raptan. Why we can do it is we are actually using it in Japan. I won't say it was an easy, you know, cruising ride from the beginning. We struggled. There are thousands, more, maybe, maybe tens of thousands of corner cases we had to solve. We faced the challenges, but we run and fix and run and fix and run and fix. And now Rock and Symphony is preparing to provide this service to the people, to the companies, which what? To the countries. And all these people, in especially emerging markets, are expecting, again, you know, we really democratize the data free wireless network. It's important, not only as a business, but it's important for the society. And uh, for us, we have seen, as I mentioned, there's a great synergy between Rakuten Mobile Subscription, Rakuten Group Ecosystem for shopping, banking, credit card, brokerage, travel, ads, everything. For example, if we join Rakuten Mobile, they use 2.61 more services from Rakuten Group. And they buy approximately 50% more from Rakuten Ichiba, which is our e-commerce services. Why? Because if they buy from Rakuten, if they use the Rakuten card, they, 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 they get our points, they get arm points, and they can pay mobile subscription by points. This is what we want, right? Most of the telecom companies wanted to get to the OTT service layer. We are the only company which came from OTT service to the mobile platform and mobile software business. Again, why only Rakuten Symphony can at this point provide the proven open RAN system is because we know how to run and fix. This is very different from legacy software development or SaaS model. You have to use it. You have to test run. Not in, because all this environment are very different. But we have been doing this, obviously with a new, you know, uh, uh, platform, a uh, new network optician, we will probably need to fix it. We need to adjust it. But we know how to do it. And then we know how to make it run. And uh, there have been no significant incident uh, for us. Uh, we are on the proven, scalable, fully virtualized, open radio exit network in the world at this moment. And uh, we have strong commitment for the future of this software-based mobile network, which we call uh, mobile as a software. Looking at the future of uh, mobile industry, in my opinion, I think 5G 
is a great news for people, great news for consumers. But I think it's a tough situation for nearby service companies. You know, I had so many meetings uh, with mobile network companies, and they are thinking, shall we do with 5G? Or shall we wait a little bit? Because there is going to be extra cost, but your offer will not go up that much. So that's a reality. So at the same time, these new OTD services are coming in to what you have been provided. Like messaging apps, uh, we have Viber, WhatsApp, Line in Japan, WeChat, Tele uh, Telegram. And then this communication can be taken over by them. So I think this is a really tough situation and mobile, you know, service companies need to evolve their business model. In order to evolve their business model, they need to think differently. They need to become cloud-based. They need to become software-based to keep and develop their agility and change themselves. They have to change. But with a legacy platform, you cannot change. As if the big banks cannot evolve because their uh, architecture is based on very old, you know, uh, legacy mainframe uh, system. So, uh, you know, Rakuten is coming from, you know, shopping, credit card, not internet banking, internet brokerage, the internet advertisement, the world program, all of these internet services. We do more than 70 services, but we are going to telecom platform. Telecom platform companies wanted to be involved, not only providing connectivity, but of course they would like to go to the edge uh, computing. Uh, they would like to make their service more valuable through OTT services, and we know how to do it, and we would like to help you guys to get there. This is, uh, you know, obviously uh, what we're doing. Uh, the Rockton Symphony uh, only, not only provide the platform, we provide the cloud, we provide open radio access network software, we help your operations, and at the same time, uh, we are going to re try to add value to the ecosystem which we have developed in, in Japan. So uh, this is what we are going to do. Uh, and we would like to be the partner of all these mobile network, mobile service companies, uh, yeah, mobile software companies. We are open. Like, we are open. We do not want to just dominate the business. We want to be collaborative. We want to be a partner uh, for anybody as much as we can. We are the newcomer to the industry, but this is the future. Thank you for listening.